Standing up here to be heard. I, I have a fire burning in my spirit. And I, uh, before I start, I would uh, covet y'all's prayers that we bow our heads and, and I'd like to say a prayer before I start. Dear God, our Heavenly Father, creator of the ends of the earth, the heavens, blessed be your name. May you be gracious to us this morning, Lord, that your will be done in this service, that we break from tradition, yes. and that we eliminate religion yes. from what's happening here today. And by your grace, with great passion, yes. we pant after your spirit, Lord, as a yes. heart panteth after the water grows. Yes. May you protect us as we minister to your people. Yes, Lord. And do our best, oh God, to glorify yes, your name. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 You know, I've got so much going on in my mind, I don't really know where to start. Just start where? But I would like to say that I am so blessed because this carnal old hunk of mud has been touched by the Almighty God through His Son, Jesus Christ. And uh, the passion that's within my heart is the realization from my perspective that God and Jesus Christ is being misrepresented in the earth today. Amen. I'm so proud of Christianity for what it's done throughout the world. Amen. The good that is done to mankind, Ministry. the beautiful edifices they built, okay. cathedrals, coliseums, huge churches, yes. steeples that stick high into the air yes. with big crosses on the top and these big crosses. I'm so proud of them for that. But I'm so angry that I feel like, folks, they've really made the gospel of Jesus Christ cheap. Amen. I heard a preacher uh, a year or so ago talking of making fun of people having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ on the radio, making fun of it. And I was, I was listening to that. I thought, well, what kind of a relationship does he want to have with Jesus Christ and God? Yeah. Amen. And I came to realize that a lot of people, what they do want is a contract with God. Yeah. They bring their lives, they bring their children, they bring their money to the church. And they say, God, look, I'm going to give you $100. If you promise me, you'll return me $150. Let me tell you something. You look in a book, you look in this book. Name me one person in this book that God put his hand on that didn't live a dramatic life, a traumatic life, a roller coaster ride. Yeah. Let me tell you something, if you really give your heart to God, it's not going to be a, anything but a roller coaster ride. I said, if you really, you know, but I'm confused. Yes. I'm just being honest with y'all. I'm confused because I would like to present the gospel of Jesus Christ in such a way that I could say, come. Kneel at the altar. Have that old time religion hit your soul and everything will be hunky dory from then on. <laughs> your life will be a bed of roses. How many in here can disclaim that? Yeah. Yeah. If God put his hand on you, it's not going to be a bed of roses. It's going to be, you're going to have to pay a price for the salvation of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I'd like to say this. Oh, by the way, brother, have you turned your phone off? No, I don't think 
Scripture. <laughs> That's an inside joke, okay? Uh, <laughs> I stand before you folks with, an, with, a, uh, with a confession that I'm a fighter. I, I, I'm born with a strong spirit. I'm not proud of it. And I'm not ashamed of it. It's the way God made me. A few years ago, I was with five men, an elderly minister, and uh, we was just communicating with each other. And this elderly minister turned to us five men and said, why are you going the direction you're going? Why don't you just go along with everybody else? Why are you standing against some of the things that's going on? And each one of the men replied, in what I considered a very bland way. And then he turned to me at last. I was like, he said, David, what about you? I said, brother, don't ask me that question unless you're genuinely want an answer. He said, oh, I want an answer. Brother, I got in my battle mode. And I said, I'm sick and tired of the ministry taking ch uh, advantage of God's people. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And I explained it in explicit detail. Because it's not about the ministry, it's about God's people. Yeah. Jesus yeah. laid down his life for the people. Yeah. The right. apostles and prophets laid down their life for the people. Right. They paid a heavy price yes. for the people. Amen, Amen brother. Yeah. When I got done, he said, David, David, wait a minute, wait a minute. He said, I feel the same way you do, but I'm too old to fight. Oh, Lord. I told him, I said, I'm not too old to fight. Oh, I might be in a few years, but right now I'm not too old to fight for God's people. All right. Amen. I would like to stand between the harlots and the sinners and the thieves and the murderers when they're being executed, stand between them and the religious world that wants to kill them when I know that they're a victim of sin and, and God's grace can cover them and they can be what God wants them to be. I want to be willing and able to do that. Hallelujah. I hope my thoughts aren't too scattered here today. No. But I was thinking about Jesus. Praise God. And, I, and I, that's what I'm here talking about. He's my friend. He's my savior. He's my protector. He's my healer. But, you know, Jesus was great in a lot of areas. But one of the things I came to realize about Jesus, he was a pretty lousy evangelist. Well, why would you say that, David? A young man comes to him and said, Lord, what can I do to inherit eternal life? He said, well, you know what the Bible says? You know what the Old Testament says? He said, yeah, I've done all that. Jesus said, well, okay, come on, follow me. No. He said, go and sell all that you have. Well, that was the truth. That was the price yes. that that man had to pay yes. to follow Jesus. Yes. Right. Jesus was unusual. Yes. Another man came and wanted to fo follow Jesus. And... Uh, he said, I, but I got one thing I need to do. I need to go bury my father. Uh -huh. yes. Jesus said, don't go bury your father. If you want to follow me, let the dead bury the dead. Yeah. He said, oh. Amen. Wow. You know what? He, he was pretty harsh, wasn't he? There was another man that came to him. Can't remember exactly the story. But uh, Jesus, at one time, this is fascinating to me, folks. And I use this illustration once in a while when I'm talking. Jesus had five, six, seven thousand people in front of him. Listening to him. He had their attention. He could have exalted himself and lifted himself up. He could have drawn those people into the kingdom of God. But then he said the most drastic thing. I wanted to use the word 
uh, another word that might not be politically correct here right now. I don't know. But Jesus said something that was so grotesque to the Jewish people. I'm talking about thousands of people out there. He said, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you know, have no life in you. Huh? Huh? If I was speaking to a thousand people, I'm speaking to y'all. What I'm really telling you, there's a price to pay for yep. salvation. Amen. It is not free. Amen. There's a price to pay for salvation. It's not free. That's, right. That's contrary to what you'll hear in the religious world. Right. Because they think it's cheap. That salvation is cheap. But not only do you have to pay a price, but these men standing behind me, May God give them the grace to pay the ultimate price. Yeah. 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 To be what God wants them to be. Yeah. Yeah. One of the great shocks. Hey, here's another thought. I'm an old novice. That's almost an oxymoron. If you know what that word means. It's kind of one of them weird words. I'm an old novice. I'm 70 years old. I just started pastoring five years ago. And here's one of the great shocks that came to me when I was became a pastor. I started getting more honor from people. I started getting more privileges from people. I started getting more respect from people. And I'm thinking, huh? I, I've become a servant? I've diminished myself to become a servant? and a slave to God's people, and they're trying to lift me up? God forbid that I accept that uh, without some resistance. Amen. Us as pastors and us as church leaders, may God give us the grace not to be exalted, but to somehow find a way to humble ourselves, not only before God, but for, before his people. Amen. 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 I don't even know for sure if I should say this, but the greatest honor, folks, that I've had since I've been in Bradenton, Florida, God gave me the privilege and the honor of hugging an angel. Thank you. Hugging an angel, David, what are you talking about? Thank you. God gave me the honor and the privilege of a homeless man walking up to me and asking me for help. Bless you. And the grace of God covered me. Amen. And this man that smelled like a cesspool was filthy from head to toe. I went and put my arms around him and I hugged him. Amen. And you know why I love him? Because by the, but by the grace of God, Amen. there's a lot. Amen. If God didn't cover you, you would be somewhere out there destitute Amen. without God. Amen. So I got an opportunity to hug an angel. Amen, brother. The greatest danger that's happening to me since I've been in Bradenton, Florida, is standing before God's people, being a representative of the gospel of Jesus Christ. What a heaviness! God forbid that I take it upon myself to do it arrogantly and within my own spirit. Right. Amen, brother. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Jesus. I want to read you some scriptures. And I'll tell you what, if there's anything I hate to do in front of people is read. I don't have dyslexia, but I got something else where my eyes go faster than my brain. And my mouth gets confused. But I want to turn to Isaiah, I mean, uh, Psalms 40. And one of my favorite scriptures to quote is in Psalms 40. And I, and I hope this all kind of fits together. I, one of the things, I'm going to switch gears here a little bit before I read that. The way we have church, folks, one of the reasons that we don't attract other people is because there's a price to pay for the way we have church. Yeah. And I don't mean coming and putting some money in the offerings. 
There's two qualities that you have to adhere to to have church with us and the way we do it. Number one, well, either three, one of them, you better have some faith. You better have some faith in God. You better have some faith in the Spirit of God. But you also have to have patience. Yes. There's many, many, many scriptures that says talks about waiting on the Lord. Yeah. Yes. And one of my favorite scriptures is in Isaiah 40 he said, I waited patiently on the Lord. And he inclined unto me and he heard my cry and brought me up out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet on a solid rock and put a song in my heart, even a song of praise to God. Many shall see it in fear. We have to learn to wait. Yes. On the Lord. Yes. 